Hello everyone, so in this particular video we are going to implement a simple neural network in PyTorch. So without any further ado, let's get started. So first we are going to do our basic imports which are pandas for reading the data frame. So import pandas as pd, then we will also need numpy as np. Then we are going to also import sklearn, um, import as np. And from sklearn.datasets, this is for the classification data set. Import make classification. After that, we are also going to import from sklearn only. We will be importing um, the train dress split. So, model selection, import train test split. Okay, after that, we are also going to import after that import matplotlib matplot why is this giving an error okay matplotlib.pyplot as plt after that obviously we have to import torch and also import torch.nn as nn so we will run this particular cell after that we will be creating our data so this is something that we have done so many times so i'll be going really fast classification and then number of samples let's say 5000 and then number of features which is let's say 50 num number of informative let's say 8 then random state is 1 2 3 4 and number of classes equal to 2 so once we are done with this we will convert it into a data frame so that we can use the head function and analyze our data set so we will use pd.dataframe and then we will just print the head so you will expect obviously 10 columns and some data from here so if i have to print the shape i'll get 5000 comma 10 fine so quickly let us do the train test split so train x test x train y and test y even though i'm writing this test it essentially is validation 10 split uh, we are going to give train then we are giving target then random or not random state let's say test size let's keep it only till 10 percent so 0 0.1 and then give random state which is equal to 1 2 3 4 okay so having done, done that let's create our custom data set so in the last video we saw how to create custom data set so class cost add and then we have to inherit from toss.utils.data.data dot data set okay after that we will define the init function and we are going to let's say give our data frame and then target okay so after this what we are going to do is we are going to define or we are going to initialize so self.df dot equal to df self.df equal to df self dot target equal to target okay then the next function if you remember it was len underscore underscore len and then we'll say self and here we will just return the shape of the data frame the first element okay the first element of the shape of the data frame now the third and very important function was get item now if you remember get item was used for taking one particular index so let's say idx and then returning the modified uh, part of the uh, mod taking the index and then taking the associated row from the data frame converting it into a uh, into a format that the model can uh, can take and process and give an output so the data point dp was self.df.iloc and then idx.values values and our target was simple it was just self.target at the index okay now ha having done that what we will do is we will basically convert this into the dp will be converted into numpy uh, from numpy to torch so torch from numpy Torch dot from numpy and then we will pass dp for targ we had to use tensor as we saw in the last video so we will just say a tensor and then we will return both of them we will return dp and also return targ okay 
now what we need to do is we need to see whether whatever we have written actually works or if there is any error or not okay so let's just give train x instead of df and then get train underscore y and let's run the get init function get item function get item function and let's pass the zero index so if it works properly we will get some value okay fine we are getting tensor and then we are getting some values fine now we had to write the data loader so let's say train data loader because we will do train and uh, validation both so we need data loader for both for both the train and the validation so we will say tall dot utils dot data dot data loader capital L and then we will say cost that I am not making a shorthand CD and you know instantiating it somewhere else I am instantiating right here itself okay so we will give train X and then train Y so this becomes our uh, object of the uh, class cost that for train x as the df and train y as the target okay now we had to give batch size this time i'm giving um, big batch size i'm saying 128 um, then we will give shuffle equal to true number of workers equal to true i don't give more than that and pin memory has to be memory has to be false now by default the pin memory is false in pytorch data loader but since i use uh, uh, the gpu many times so i have to actually write it okay so that's why i always tend to write this otherwise if you are not using gpu many times just leave it so here we will say val of x and then val of y oh i'm sorry not val test we have as seen so let's even change this to test dia and we will run this particular cell okay now what we need to do is we need to now we are coming to the main part that is writing the model writing the class for the neural network so we have to define a class we we'll just call net and we have to um, inherit from the nn dot module okay now what we need to do is we need to define the init function init and we won't be passing any parameters right now before i forget let me write super otherwise i always forget to write the super super net comma self dot in it okay so having done that let's take it a step further let's define our layers so let's say layer one layer one equal to so we will be having a simple neural network so linear um we had 10 features in the start and let's say we will upcast it to 20 okay and in the second layer why is this coming as yes. okay i have given not given the space fine so i had forgotten the space um then we'll say layer 2 and then finally we will oh, i'm sorry we will convert this back to a single output okay and uh, in between let's give a relu activation so I already assume you know the meanings of activation functions like ReLU, Sigmoid, all of this. Okay, I assume that you have um, done your machine learning or basics of deep learning before getting into this uh, series. So for that, I'm showing you the way how to write ReLU, but I assume you already know what ReLU is. Okay, so this is how you initialize ReLU in um, PyTorch. So for the last layer, we will also need Sigmoid. So we will say nn dot sigmoid okay capital r small e and capital l u for relu and here only the capital s okay now we need to define the forward function so this will have self and x now what will happen is if you can uh, if you know how deep uh, how neural networks work you will have the first layer and there the input will be given so self dot layer one and then the input will be x over here it will give you something output I'll just say X only okay after that what happens is that particular output has to be passed through our activation function in this case we are passing it through the relu so we will say self dot relu and passing the X so obviously this X is our over here and the output of this is again stored back into the X then it goes to the second layer so again we will say layer 2 X so this X is this one and finally we will pass everything through the sigmoid layer okay 
after that we'll just return x fine now what we are going to do is we are going to instantiate this class so we are going to say model equal to net open close bracket since we are not passing any parameters we will just hit enter fine now what we are going to do is we are going to define the loss function and the optimizer so we will say loss underscore fn so in this case since this is a binary classification we will use bce loss again i assume you know all these things okay bce loss and optimizer optimizer equal to um torch dot optim dot stochastic stochastic gradient descent and then we will say model dot parameters okay after the, uh, after doing this what we are going to do is we are going to define the training loop so let's say we are saying um, number of epochs as 100 okay so we got a parameter okay i forgot to get the learning rate no not a big deal so lr is 0 0.01 okay and now we are going to run and hopefully it should run yeah so after this so we will say for epoch in range num of epochs num of epochs okay so for um, we are going to have train and uh, test both so we will say uh, train loss and initialize it as an empty list and then let's scroll down yeah and then we will have test loss also and we will initialize this as a empty list so train epoch loss so in each epoch how much train loss is there we will say zero initially and test epoch epoch, epoch loss we will also initialize it as zero so for data comma target in train dl so if you remember train train dl was the data loader it, it was supposed to give us data and the target fine so we will say model and then we'll pass in data and we'll have the output okay we will call this output now we need to find the loss so loss is loss function and here we are going to say output and then we are also going to say out here um, the target fine now we need to um, we need to add the loss to the uh, train epoch loss because this is for one epoch so we will say train underscore loss underscore epoch underscore loss plus equal to loss dot detach dot numpy now why have i used detach because this one if you remember from the la uh, from the last to last video in the uh, autograd video back propagation we used to have we said loss is the last variable right so since this is in the um, computational graph this is in the back uh, this is in the forward computational graph what we need to do is in order to be able to you know remove it from the graph we have to say detach why we are doing it so that we can only have uh, the value otherwise what will happen this thing this operation if we don't write this this operation this particular uh, variable train epoch loss will be added to the computational graph we don't want that right we just want to know what is the loss value after the calculation that's why we have to say detach now after doing this loss becomes a leaf node fine so said that now we are going to write optimizer the common code that we have to write everywhere optimizer optimizer dot zero grad now what this does and what the next two line this this you already know what loss dot backward does now the first line optimizer dot zero grad this basically if you remember from the last to last video the grad function had the value for the weight update here what we are trying to do is we are we are going to remove we are saying remove any value or zero all the values so that we can write new value and where we will write new value loss dot backward uh, after loss dot backward what we need to do we need to run the step so optimizer dot step this will update the values okay so this was our entire uh, loop for train now we need to write the loop for test so what we will say with torch dot no grad now why torch dot no grad what it does if you remember in the last to last video i told you those two videos tensors and autograd are very very important however uh, having understood that i assume you have seen those videos 
the reason why we are doing torch.nograd is basically whenever you do a function, if you remember in that, whenever the computational graph was created, simultaneously backward graph was also created. However, in this case, while we are testing, we are not going to train because obviously it is testing or validation. We are not going to train the network. So when we are not going to train the network, we will not use backpropagation. And if, since we are not using backpropagation, there is no use of making the backward graph. So this basically helps us only do the forward computation without making the backward graph. Fine? Understood? So why we are doing it? Because we don't need to do it. We don't need to create the backward graph because we are not going to train the model. Okay? So this helps us do that. So again for what uh, this one we are say, going to say target for data uh, comma target in in here we will say test data loader. Here we said um, here we say train data loader. Now we are saying test data loader. Again, we will copy this thing. Output equal to model data because here the data has changed. Here the data comes from here. And then we will find the loss. So we will say loss equal to loss function. And then we are going to say output comma target. And uh, after that what we are going to do is we are going to append the test epoch loss. Epoch underscore loss plus equal to loss now i still re write detach even though there is no point of writing detach however but, but since i just want to mostly what i do is i copy paste okay i copy it like you can see these three lines are the same these three lines are the same so obviously this detach also comes i haven't tried without this you can try and definitely see okay so till here we have got i think we have not written float over here if I can see I have not written float over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write float over here. So ideally you will get the error if you haven't written, but uh, let's see. Okay. Um, let's try to run this and let's see if there is an error. We will see there. Yes. Target say no chance in okay. What has happened is one of them is of a different size so let me see this is how you debug okay so obviously mm -hmm. obviously you get some out outputs and then you see that you know they are not in the proper shape so what you do is you print the shape okay so you can see over here that output has a shape of 128 comma 1 and target has a shape of 128 so what we are going to do we are saying squeeze s q u e e z a so we have to do it over here also s S Q U E Z squeeze. Hopefully now it should work. Let me go and run this particular cell. So okay, it seems like as if it is working. So till that time, let me write the code for plotting. So we'll say plt dot plot, and we are going to plot the train underscore loss. Okay, and in the next slide, in the next, we are going to say we are going to plot test underscore loss. Okay, so if it takes a lot of time, I'm going to pause this and return when uh, the training will be complete. So one error in this code that we forgot to write something was here we did not write train loss dot append. So we did we defined the lists over here, but we did not up over here, but we did not append the values. So we will say over here train loss dot append and train epoch loss similarly for um, test loss we are going to append and then we are going to say test epoch loss test epoch and loss and we will have to again run this particular cell so that our values can be captured so the training has completed and as you can see our loss is decreasing and even the test loss ha uh, uh, test loss has been decreasing so this seems to be working now you can also print the accuracy and all of that i haven't done it right here and that is you know just like i think three to four lines of code so yeah that was it for this video comment section you can ask questions instagram you can follow me links are in the description and fiverr gig if you want a one to one discussion on any topic related to computer science or your project or pytorch deep learning anything in general so yeah thank you very much and bye